Now, from WYDC-TV, this is Big Fox News at 10. More states are rolling back COVID measures as cases continue to decline nationwide, but the decision to lift mask mandates is being met with mixed reaction. Jonathan Sari has more. It's a promising sign in the COVID-19 pandemic. Yesterday, governors in four states announced plans to lift statewide mask requirements in schools, either this month or in March. New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy cited a decline in COVID numbers in announcing his timeline. About a dozen other states are keeping their mandates in place for now, but they're facing more pressure to return to normal, with some medical experts adding the decision to end mask wearing is long overdue. There is no quality data demonstrating the benefit for these children wearing these masks in school, but there is data showing the risks and harms associated with it. Connecticut and New Jersey leaders say they'll allow local school districts to decide whether or not to retain their mask requirements. But it's not yet clear how many will take them up on the offer. The Biden administration continues to recommend mask wearing in schools. Our advice to every school district is to abide by public health guidelines. It continues to be at this point uh, that the CDC is advising that masks can delay, reduce transmission. The decision to drop face coverings comes as new COVID infections are declining. Cases are now one third of what they were three weeks ago. But deaths, a lagging indicator, are increasing, averaging about 2,400 per day. They're still in what, what the CDC would categorize as a red stage of transmission, meaning that transmission rate is still high. Public health officials say it could take several more weeks for deaths to follow trends of declining case counts. In Atlanta, Jonathan Seri, Fox News. The police chief in Ottawa calling the Freedom Convoy a siege he can't control. Now authorities are looking for help in dealing with the group and clearing them out of Canada's capital. David Lee Miller has the latest. We are stretched to the limit. We cannot do it alone. The mayor of Ottawa asking Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau for nearly 2,000 more police officers to help control demonstrations in the capital by the Freedom Convoy. More lies, demonizing. This is what you do to your fellow Canadian. This coming after the mayor declared a state of emergency there as the group continues calls for an end to all vaccine mandates and COVID restrictions. <laughs> Residents in the area are growing more weary of the continued noise, traffic and frustrations brought on by the convoy. A judge there granting a 10 day injunction to ban truckers from constantly honking their horns. For the people of Ottawa, for even the people here who work in Ottawa, such as me, Mr. Speaker, it's starting to look a lot more like an occupation than a protest. Meanwhile, GoFundMe is facing criticism after pulling a fundraiser for the convoy, returning the millions raised for the group alleging illegal activity by the protesters. The group turning now to Give, Send, Go, where they have raised more than $5 million. Police in Ottawa saying they will continue to work to pull the group's funding and have warned that anyone who supplies the truckers with gas and other supplies will face arrest. We will be relentless in pursuing the funding that has enabled this demonstration to continue to this point. Several officials in Canada are also calling for groups and politicians in the U.S to stop funding and interfering with the situation in Ottawa. In New York, David Lee Miller, Fox News. More meetings set to take place overseas as leaders look for a peaceful solution between Russia, Ukraine and NATO allies. Lauren Blanchard in Washington with more. The buildup of U.S. and NATO forces continues near Ukraine as Russia conducts their own military exercises. So does NATO, and in Ukraine, fears are mounting of a deadly invasion. I am afraid for myself, for my family. I want to learn to defend myself and defend Ukraine. French President Emmanuel Macron sat down with Russian President Vladimir Putin on Monday to try his hand at diplomacy. Moscow and Paris could not make any deals. In a potentially positive movement, Moscow said it will pull back its forces from Belarus, just miles from Ukraine's capital city, once it wraps up military exercises later this month. Naturally, it is understood that upon completion of these exercises, the troops will return to the places of their permanent deployment. Tuesday, Macron met with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. He it will take the coming days, weeks, or maybe months to allow us to make progress. 
President Biden drawing a firmer line back home after meeting with German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, threatening to stop the Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline between Russia and Germany if Putin invades. We will, uh, I promise you, we'll be able to do it. America needs to show strength and needs to show deterrence when it comes to any threats that are coming our way or towards our allies. Moscow says it will draw its some 30,000 troops back from Belarus after military training, but at the same time, Russia continues to build up forces and military equipment. In Washington, Lauren Blanchard, Fox News. No vaccine, no prom. That's the message at one high school in California. Alyssa Harrington has the story. Obviously, like, junior prom is a big deal. A lot of my friends, like, past couple days have been like really sad about it. Juniors at Monta Vista High School in Danville said they were taken by surprise to learn some of their classmates won't be allowed at prom. As many people like bought their dresses, spent a lot of money, got all excited and ready and they can't go because they're not vaccinated. The dance is Saturday at the Scottish Rite Center near Oakland's Lake Merritt. The school's principal, Dr. Kevin Ahern, said when they booked the venue, the rules were different. Students would need to be vaccinated or show proof of a negative COVID test to enter. Now it's vaccination only. It's really hard to tell a student, no, you can't because of this situation, because things changed. And it, it was just very disappointing. And so I kind of got a whole variety of just anger. There was, there, was, um, there was obviously sadness. There was concern. Back in December, the city of Oakland passed an ordinance requiring proof of vaccination for everyone 12 and older at indoor locations. Those rules went into effect this month. Principal Ahern sent a proposal to the city council asking for an exemption. He offered to have all unvaccinated students tested at the school the night before prom. We have great respect for the decision that was made, but at the same time, these are students. We, we, we are in a very controlled environment. Uh, our students are, are, um, are masked and, and great majority of them are vaccinated. So we're talking about a, a small percentage of students who would really like to be able to come to it and, and enjoy that event. I get where he's coming from. I just think that, frankly, people should be vaccinated by now. The school cannot reschedule the event because the venue is booked for months. So far, the city council has not responded to the proposal. But in a statement, the Oakland Scottish Rite Center said, we will abide by and enforce all local, city, county, state, and federal protocols related to COVID-19 safety measures. Exceptions will not be made. I reached out to the Oakland City Council to see if they've had a chance to look over the proposal, but so far I have not heard back. The principal here at Monta Vista High School told me that he hopes to have an answer sometime this week, even if it's a no, so he knows what to tell the school community. Still ahead tonight, the Salt Lake City Chamber of Commerce is asking business owners to let their employees play hooky and instead step in as substitute teachers. Because of the high uh, surge on this Omicron variant and the number of people that have been sick, the demand for subs has been much higher than normal. More on how many states are desperate for subs and who could possibly have to step in to keep your child in school. Here's your local stock market update from Big Fox. Your Twin Tiers forecast from Big Fox. All right, thanks again for checking in as we take a look at your local forecast. I'm meteorologist Todd Delson, and it will be a pretty quiet night tonight in Elmira and Corning. Temperatures dropping down to around 14 as we head out the door on a Wednesday. Again, our average is 15. Sunrise tomorrow morning will be at 710. Daytime high at 42, so it will be a milder midweek. 35 is where we should be for this early in mid-February, and 432 is our sunset. Uh, we should note here that we're going to have a chance of some rain and snow developing Wednesday night into Thursday. Could see some minor accumulations of rain and snow. Again, temperatures will be a little bit above average and uh, we're continuing to see these clipper systems roll in from the north and west. At least as they come in, it will be warmer, but uh, from the 13th to the 17th, we're going to start to see those temperatures again dive back down to below average levels over the eastern Great Lakes region. So again, a mild Wednesday ahead. Temperatures for the most part will be a good 5 to 10 degrees above average. We see that wintry mix to Developing Wednesday night, 
through Thursday, kind of wrapping up Thursday night into early Friday morning and the weekend looking a little cooler, especially on Sunday as temperatures uh, go back down to below average levels. Take some highs at that point into the 20s. So starting off with some sunshine again, uh, not too bad, but then here comes that light rain snow chance kind of coming in in pieces, if you will. So Wednesday night we'll see a chance and then some uh, minor snow accumulations across the uh, greater uh, region here for your Thursday. And again, we're, when we're talking about total liquid amounts through 7 p.m. Friday, maybe a few one hundredths of an inch, and then you factor in the snowfall potential and just a minor coating. Uh, really, generally, everybody about a half an inch or less could see some isolated near one inch tallies to the far north and west. All right, so tonight waking up to uh, 14 degrees, mostly clear skies. Winds will be light, and again, that's right where we should be. Daytime highs uh, after a chilly start will be back to above average levels, but when you factor in the wind early in the morning, we could see some single digits here and there for Wednesday morning. Day planner again shows some sunshine. Clouds will be thickening up late into the day. We'll top out at 42 degrees. Again, the skies will begin to uh, cloud up late as that light rain snow chance develops. Uh, temperatures here again almost 5 to 10 degrees above where we should be. A uh, little bit cooler as we head to the south into the upper 30s in a few communities. Uh, but again, well above average for this uh, early to mid February. Daytime highs on Thursday as that rain snow chance pushes on in will actually be a little bit cooler uh, because of the clouds. So that wraps up and then we see temperatures fall a little bit on Friday. Here comes that sunshine. Another chance of some rain and snow as we head into the weekend. Will be a warmer day Saturday up to 40 a little bit breezy and then behind that clipper system temperatures fall then back down into the mid 20s which will be below average once again. The job market is improving but not all industries are seeing the same gains. Kevin Cork has more on how autonomous trucks could solve the ongoing driver shortage as package deliveries get a futuristic makeover. The economy finally making some strides, even in the midst of the Omicron variant, with companies adding more than 460,000 new jobs in January alone, giving employers hope for another month of growth in February. Uh, retail did show a big gain in jobs. It suggests that um, a lot of retailers didn't cut their holiday workers, which usually happens in January. While retail is showing signs of recovery, the trucking industry is still teetering, which could jeopardize deliveries to stores and consumers. There is a need for over 60,000 uh, you know, drivers uh, in the long haul trucking space. So what do you do when no one wants to drive trucks? Well, you let the trucks drive themselves. Gaddick is the first autonomous vehicle company in the world to operate fully self-driving trucks on commercial delivery routes partnering with Walmart across several states to help ramp up their deliveries. What we do is uh, move these online grocery orders from one of Walmart's dark store, which is their micro fulfillment center, and move these orders to uh, a nearby retail location where Walmart's end consumer can go and do a curbside pickup. Gaddix trucks hope to solve supply chain issues as well by only delivering goods from distribution centers to retail stores. Ah, but in case you're wondering, no, Gaddick isn't alone. There are other startups like Too Simple, Aurora, and Waymo that are all looking to get more autonomous trucks out on the roadways at some point this year. If you're planning to give flowers to a loved one this Valentine's Day, get ready to pay more. Industry experts say supply chain issues and labor shortages means higher prices for your favorite blooms this year. Giovanni Carillo has more. The season of love is here. Soon, millions of Americans will be out spoiling their better halves with flowers, stuffed animals, chocolates, and more. Just, just make people happy. That's, that's, for me, that's what it's all about. That was Michael Mireles, a florist in Las Cruces. He says this act of love will be hurting people's wallets, from red roses to white daisies and even lilies. Borderland florists say prices for flowers are going up. At a real flower shop, um, you can expect to pay anywhere from an extra 10 to even up, up to $50 more for just one dozen of roses. Over at Beninices Flowers and Quince in East El Paso, the owner says this flower arrangement is regularly $70. This year, it's closer to 100 Due to the um, shortage of supply, flower has just, the costs have been going up. 
Flores tell me a lack of workers, bad weather, and an increase in demand during Valentine's Day will spike up the price for these blooms. Supply chain issues have been exacerbated by COVID, by lack of production. Demand is pretty much pretty high for for anything and everything. It's just a combination of all, all those things. Mireles tells me the demand this season has been so high, he's deciding to stop taking new orders nearly a week before the holiday. Yeah, because I, I can only take so much. I know I'm up to 14 deliveries already. Too old for all that chaos anymore. I like to keep everything under control. How much ice is part of a glacier? Scientists say much less than you think. Jackie Ibanez has more on a shocking new study and what less ice actually means for the world. We want to preserve the ice on Earth and, and that now overnight becomes a more difficult challenge. Using data collected from high-tech satellites, a new study published in the journal Nature Geoscience finds the world's glaciers are made up of 20% less ice than scientists originally thought. And the discovery is proving to be a double-edged sword. On one hand, some coastal cities could be saved in the future. The one positive is that ultimately when all glaciers melt, sea level rise will be less than we thought. But less water from melting glaciers is also a bad thing. When the massive mounds of ice naturally melts, they flow into nearby lakes and rivers providing life-saving water to surrounding communities. People who live around them and actually downstream from them, more importantly, depend upon them as a buffer for the amount of water that enters the river systems from which they irrigate their crops and, and, and drink. If your river is, is supplied by a melting glacier that disappears, the river will disappear as well. But a water crisis could already be in the works. Scientists say between 2000 and 2019, Increased global temperatures cause glaciers to lose roughly 5.4 trillion tons of ice. Now we know that there's 20% less ice in mountain glaciers. We have to think a little bit harder about how we want to preserve them. Already faced with melting ice caps, officials in Chile are trying to create artificial glaciers by freezing rain in hopes of using the water during the dry months to avoid droughts. Ranchers and farmers could soon be getting greener. The USDA announcing Monday their plans to spend more than $1 billion on projects to help farmers and ranchers fight climate change. President Biden made a pledge last February to cut agriculture emissions in half by 2030. Public and private entities can apply for grants ranging from $5 million to $100 million to help fund these projects. Farmers have seen major losses from floods, storms and droughts, making tackling climate change a major part of keeping their way of life. The next time you want to play hooky from work, just tell your boss you're going back to school. In Utah, the Salt Lake City Chamber of Commerce is asking business owners to let their employees play hooky and step in as substitute teachers. Rebecca Castor has the story. In New Mexico, they've called in the National Guard. In Texas, some school districts are asking parents to step in. Here in Salt Lake City, it could be the banker, barista or electrician teaching your kids. It just makes plain good sense for our businesses to get involved with education. This is our future workforce. Our schools need help. The latest surveys from October found that 75% of school principals are having trouble finding substitute teachers. It's only gotten worse after winter break. Because of the high uh, surge on this Omicron variant and the number of people that have been sick, the demand for subs has been much higher than normal. In the first two weeks of the new year, the Granite School District in Salt Lake had nearly 2,000 sub requests. It only has about 700 subs total. Unfortunately, a number of those circumstances, particularly in secondary schools, were simply pulling some of those classes that are unfilled down to the auditorium uh, where one uh, adult can supervise. Uh, but very little instruction. Since reaching out to local businesses in early January, the school district says it's received 114 substitute teacher applications. Well, this is a way to make a difference in your community. Uh, in reality, uh, I think we all want to know that we're out there making a difference for the world, making the world a better place. This is just one small thing that you can do. The governor of Utah has also issued an executive order allowing state employees to fill in at schools. Oklahoma, New Mexico and North Carolina have done this as well. We want to leave you with a smile tonight. Need a rest from all of the chicken sandwich wars? Kentucky Fried Chicken has a comfortable answer. Rest up with this oversized KFC chicken sandwich pillow. KFC calls it the chicken sandwich snuggler. 
Perhaps you can order it for that special someone this Valentine's Day. Hmm. The nearly three-foot pillow plushie was made in partnership with Pillow Pets, and it looks like the extra crispy chicken breast, brioche bun, and pickle sandwich. The cost, though, will set you back a few sandwiches. It sells for $99.99. Thanks for joining us. Have a great night.